Hello again. The next topic we're going to be talking about is whether the energy is supplied to an element or absorbed from the element. In order to do that, we need to talk about voltage and something called voltage polarity, or the direction of voltage, and what exactly voltage might mean in this regard to go up a voltage or down a voltage. So I'm going to begin by drawing my generic circuit element and labeling my terminals A and B. I'm going to use a notation that you might be familiar with from the textbook. An arrow pointing this way called VAB and similarly an arrow pointing this way called VBA. What this means is that we're talking about the energy gained by a coulomb of charge or lost moving one way or the other. For example, if my coulomb of charge is entering this way, so if my current I of t is entering into terminal A, then it might be moving through this voltage VAB, and whether it loses or gains energy is what we're going to be talking about today, and how we might reason about whether it's absorbing or losing energy to the element. Let's now take a look at what this might depend on. It turns on out it's the sign of these voltages. And let's see exactly what that means. What does it mean for us to develop a voltage across an element? And how does the current gain or lose energy uh, as it passes through the element? So this is broken up into multiple cases. Case number one, I of t greater than zero and VAB greater than zero. Also, we're assuming that current flows into terminal A. So let's just draw this and see what it looks like. I have to begin with my generic circuit element. I'm assuming my current is flowing this way and is greater than zero. I'm assuming that this voltage, VAB, is greater than zero. Typically what you'll see is I will draw a negative sign here and a positive sign here. What this means is that B is at a higher voltage than A. So it doesn't mean to imply that there's any negative numbers going on. Uh, it just means that, that B is at a higher voltage than A. When this is the case, we might ask, well, what's happening? So if I'm moving from a low to a high voltage, and I'm moving in that direction, then remember that voltage is the number of joules per coulomb. So it's as though I'm moving from a low energy to a high energy. So my current, or my charges, are gaining energy as they move in this configuration. What we say in this case is the element is a source. And sources, as we've talked about before, might be a battery, might be a generator, a solar cell, that sort of thing. Anything that provides energy into a circuit is a source. And in this course, we say that energy is supplied by the source to the current or to the charges would be better. So, in the situation, once again, I'll go back up and show you, when current, which is greater than zero, is entering the terminal A, and when this terminal is at a lower voltage than terminal B, the current is moving up voltage. It is gaining energy. In other words, it's moving from a low energy to a high energy. The element is a source. It's providing energy to the current, and therefore providing energy to the circuit. And energy is supplied by the source to the charges. That's how we uh, talk about these particular setups. Now, let's talk about a different scenario. This is case number two. And I'm going to set it up graphically. What happens if VAB is greater than zero, so this is A and this is B, 
and the same setup as I had before. But in this case, what happens if the current is flowing the other way? In other words, what happens in this case when the current enters at the higher voltage and goes to the lower voltage? Well, the current moves from a high energy to a low energy. If this is the case, the current loses energy and the element absorbs energy. There are many different names for this phenomenon. We might say the element is a load, and we've seen things like light bulbs or smartphones, something that consumes energy. In this setup, what happens is the current gives energy to the element and the element might be called the load. Now you might ask, well, what happened to VBA? So in my circuits elements that I've been drawing, I drew VAB, and I just somewhat arbitrarily assumed that A was at a lower potential than B. But in the initial one, I also drew this voltage VBA. Well, let's reason about this for a second. If I have current entering this way, then I am going from a low energy to a high energy. The energy gained is VBA joules per coulomb, otherwise known as VBA volts. I'm sorry, VAB. My apologies on that. Similarly, if I'm going the other way, If this is where my current is coming in, then I'm going from a high energy to a low energy. It's awkward to say that I'm losing negative VAB joules per coulomb. Instead, I might say VBA. So VBA So if I go the other way, VBA is a negative voltage compared to VAB. The negative sign there implies that the energy flow is going in the opposite direction. So, as I was going this way into the current, or into the element, I'm sorry, I went up from low to high energy, and the amount of energy I gained was VAB joules per coulomb. When I go the other way, then I lose energy by an amount of VBA joules per coulomb, or negative VAB joules per coulomb. Whichever way you'd like to work with it is fine. Typically, I like to work with only positive numbers. As a result, if I'm going the other way, I'll use VBA. However, if you prefer to use negative numbers because you want to be consistent, say you want to always only use VAB, that's acceptable as well. The key to circuits is something very, very important. Keep your signs straight. What I mean by this is as follows. If you choose to use VAB all the time, then you will have positive and negative. As long as you are consistent, that's okay. If, for example, your current is entering in B, and B is at a higher voltage, and going down to A, which is at a lower voltage, then as long as you use a negative sign there to indicate that you're losing energy in the current, then we'll have the same answer at the end, possibly up to only the difference being a negative sign, if I went the other way and said, no, in fact, we're going from VBA, we're going the other way. As long as your signs are straight, your answer and mine will agree, possibly up to a negative sign. And then we just re, um, discuss that at the end and make sure that that negative sign uh, makes sense, it is consistent. As long as your signs were kept consistent, then everything should work out in the end. Let's do an example now where we're doing something a little bit more complex. 
And this is a fairly common um, example, so I'd like to talk about it in a bit of detail. And the question we're asking ourselves is, is energy absorbed or supplied by the element? So one consistent thing I do want to make sure that we're all doing in this course is considering the energy flow into or out of the elements of the circuit themselves. Although if energy flows out of the element, it flows into the current, and similarly if it flows into the element, it must flow out of the current, it will help us if we're consistent with one of those two things. So what we're going to say is that we're only considering this energy flow from the perspective of the element that is either supplying or absorbing the energy. And that way when I say energy is supplied, what I mean implicitly is that it is supplied by the element that the current is passing through, not by the current. So let me set this up now, and I'm going to actually use some numbers about these voltages and the current as well. And this is where we're going to think about how do we keep our sign straight. So let us pretend that I say VAB is equal to 10 volts. Let's say that the current enters. However, let's say the current is actually negative 1 amp. The question we're trying to solve is, is energy absorbed or supplied by the element? However, we have an issue here, which is this negative sign. What do I do with it? Well, if you remember back when we talked about the direction of current, if we get a negative sign, what that really means is the current is in fact flowing in the opposite direction. So what the first thing I'm going to do is redraw this so that number one, I flip the direction of my arrow, and number two, I flip the sign of my current. That'll allow us to get back to one of the two scenarios that I showed you before. Let's redraw. So everything so far is the same. So is VAB. It's still positive 10 volts in this direction. However, my current is going to be flipped. In this diagram, it went from the right to the left. Now I'm going to flip my current and say, no, it is in fact going this way. And I of T is positive 1 amp. And this is what I was getting at when I said keep your sign straight. In this case, I had to do two things. I flipped the direction of the arrow, and I also had to flip the sign. I couldn't do one or the other. I had to do both. So now we can see that since positive current enters the low energy terminal, we have what we saw in case one above energy is supplied by the element. And that's the key here. So let me summarize because there's a table of, um, of cases that are important for us to know. If VAB is greater than zero, I of T is greater than zero, and I of T enters the low energy terminal, or the low voltage terminal, then the current gains energy and the element supplies energy. On the other hand, if VAB is greater than zero, I of t is greater than zero, but I of t enters the high energy or the high voltage terminal, then the element absorbs energy. That's it for this video. Next video, we're going to actually start computing how much power is being used. We're going to put some numbers to these things and then try to get from power into energy.